All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about dividing whole numbers. So specifically, multi-digit whole numbers by two and three-digit whole numbers. Moving on, our goal is that we'll be able to accurately divide with multi-digit whole numbers. Uh, this lesson will focus on dividing four and five-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. Of course, we're going to start um, a little bit more basic and then move into some more advanced problems. Moving on. First, let's focus on dividing a three-digit number by a two-digit number. So we've got a couple problems here. Um, and first, we have to get this problem written correctly in order to do long division. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is place the number 782 in the box. And then 46, our divisor, goes outside the box. That's what we're dividing by. All right. Uh, using the standard algorithmic approach, which basically is the way you were taught how to divide, more than likely, we say, how many times does 46 go into, and I'm just looking at 7, the number 7. Well, 46 can't go into 7. All right. So I'm going to put an X above that. And now I'm going to look at the first two numbers in my dividend. How many times does 46 go into 78? And it goes into it one time. Now we multiply. 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 times 4 is 4. So we subtract the product of 1 and 46. 8 minus 6 equals 2. 7 minus 4 equals 3. Once you subtract, we need to bring that next number down. And now I'm asking myself, how many times does 46 go into 322? Well, what I like to do in this case is say this is about 50, and this is close to 300. So 50 would go into 300 how many times? Or you could even make it simpler and say, how many times does 5 go into 30? So imagine that you're just looking at the first digit here and the first two digits here. And we get a 6. Now I multiply. 6 times 6 is 36, so I'm going to put the 6 down and carry my 3. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Now I'm ready to subtract. Of course, I recognize now that I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from here, make this a 1, and this becomes 12. 12 minus 6 is equal to 6, and I'm going to have to borrow again. I actually gave that whole answer there, but I'd borrow from the 3, it'd become a 2, and this becomes 11. 11 minus 7 is 4, and 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, at the end, when I notice, oh my gosh, I have 46 left over, and my divisor is 46, that means it could go into it one more time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take that 6 and move it over, and I'm going to put a 7 in that place, because that means that it would go into it seven times. And there would be zero remainder because we would subtract it one more time. So this does happen on occasion when we use this estimation process, uh, but I would rather estimate low or have too few than to overestimate. Okay, and always pay attention to that uh, amount that's remaining uh, to see if that divisor can go into it one more time. All right, let's look at the next one. Maybe you could try to take out a paper and pencil and work this problem out. Remember, you can check your answer with a calculator later on, but uh, try to do it using the long division approach. Did you get the right number in the box? Okay, let's see how you did. 46 does not go into 5, so I put an X. This helps keep my place values lined up. 46 goes into 50 one time. 1 times 46 equals 46. And now we're ready to subtract. Again, if you want to borrow, if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can cross out the 5 and make it a 4. And then make this a 10 to subtract. But some of you can just say, well, 50 and you take away 46, you're going to have 4 left. Either way is fine. Bring that next number down. 46 goes into 46. Well, well, this is nice. It goes into it once, which is going to be exactly 46. And I have a zero remainder, which means that's an exact answer. 
Now those first two are a little bit more basic, um, simpler problems where we came out with an exact whole number. On occasion though, it won't work out quite that nicely. And they'll get a, a little bit more complex. So let's take a look at these problems. I'm going to do the first one for you and then I'm going to let you try to solve this problem before we go through it. So in this first problem, whoops, here we go. We write 314, our dividend, divided by 16, our divisor. 16 goes into 31 one time. 1 times 16 equals 16. We subtract, and again, we can borrow in this case. The 3 becomes a 2, and this becomes 11. 11 minus 6 is 5, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get 15. Bring that 4 down. Uh, and you're always thinking too, is 15 bigger than my divisor? If it is, then I'm going to have to put 16 into it another time. But it wasn't. So bring that next number down. 16 goes into this how many times? And again, I could look at it as, um, you know, this is pretty close to 15. And 15 times 10 would equal 150. So it's probably going to be a little bit less than that. So I'm going to put a 9 here. 9 times 6 is 54, so I'm going to put a 4 down here and carry my 5. Whoa, that was a wrong number carried. I'm going to have to write that one in, I guess. Um, so we're going to put our 5 up here. And 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So I'm going to bring that down. Okay, now I'm ready to subtract. 4 minus 4 is 0, 5 minus 4 is 1, so I'm going to have 10 left over. Well, what do I do at this point? I have 10 left over. Some of you might think that I'm done, but what we actually have to do is, that's right, add a decimal and a 0. The decimal is going to go straight up in your answer, and the 0 is going to drop down. Because remember, behind every whole number, is an unlimited number of uh, zeros after the decimal. Now, 16 goes in 100 how many times? Again, we can estimate and think about, okay, 15 times 6 is 90, and maybe some of you aren't as good at uh, doing mental math with those bigger numbers, so you might just take a lower guess, like 5 or 6, um, and then see if there's more left over. But in this case, we chose 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So I put a 6 here. That's where I'm carrying my 3 now, so I can get rid of that 5. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9, and I'm ready to subtract. 100 minus 96 is 4. So I still have a remainder. I'm going to have to add another 0 and bring that baby down. 16 goes into 40 how many times? And I know this is kind of a lengthy process, but it's important to know the process and to know that there is going to end up being an end or maybe you'll recognize that there's a repeating decimal or something like that. 16 goes into 40 two times. 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, we would carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 would be 3 and that's where the 32 comes from. Now we subtract. Again, you can borrow if you want. Or some of you can just say, well, 40 minus 32 is 8. But if you borrow, 10 minus 2 is 8. We still have a remainder. I'm going to have to add a 0, bring that 0 down. How many times does 16 go into 80? If you know your multiples of 5, you recognize that it is exactly 5 times. And when you multiply 5 times 16, you get 80, which means that is the end of our decimal. So we actually got 19 and 625 thousandths as our answer. Now, most of the others will be pretty simple. So I want you to try this one, though. This one will be a little bit more complex. Um, it will have something past the decimal. Go ahead and try to solve this one on your own, and then we'll see how you did. Okay, let's check it out. First of all, whoops, I gotta show off my... Okay, 
accidentally gave away one of the answers, but we put 932 divided by 40, and of course 40 doesn't go into 9. But it goes into 93 two times. 2 times 40 is 80, and I'm going to reveal that answer. Whoop, there we go, 80. When we subtract 93 minus 80, I get 13, and I bring the next number down. So don't forget to bring that next number down, and we bring the 2 down. And 40 goes into 132. Again, I can say, well, how many times does 4 go into 13? That's a good way to estimate. And we're just kind of dividing both numbers by 10. 4 goes into 13 uh, three times, which would be 12. 4 times 3 is 12. So 40 times 3 is equal to 120. And now we subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1. We have 12. Don't forget, we have to add that decimal. It goes straight up in your quotient, and the zero comes straight down. And guess what? We just found out that uh, 3 times 40 is 120, so that makes this next answer real easy. And we subtract, and we're going to get uh, another terminating decimal, 23 and 3 tenths. Moving on. Now it's your turn to practice a little bit. I grabbed a couple of the more, and you get the opportunity to uh, try out some of the more challenging problems here. So you will get a whole number of answers for all of these, no decimals. Um, those other ones were just uh, practice problems to help you understand decimals. Um, but these will give you whole number answers. Let's see how you do. Let's try this one first. Go ahead and take out your paper pencil and take 8,520 divided by 60. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have gotten 142 as your answer. Next, let's do this one. 7,488 divided by 72. Again, use the long division process to solve this problem. Okay, let's see how you did. 104. You should have gotten 104. How about 18,945 divided by 15? Pause the screen. Work the problem out. All right, let's see how you did. When you divide by 15, you get 1,263. Your final practice problem, 47,616 divided by 64. Okay. And you should have gotten the answer. Whoop, 744. Well, I hope that helped you out with understanding how to divide multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithmic approach. See ya.